but his needs he needs that air spray. Look at that dust. That's that's disgusting. That's literally disgusting. He needs that air spray. Get that thing a lot cleaner, please. So we have dust two again. It's hard not to favor Renegades. Um, I think they're definitely a stronger team. Going into this again, I said yesterday they're underachieving. Had a tough game versus NIP yesterday, but I would expect them to have a better time of things today on Dust2. Yeah, yesterday NIP were playing incredibly well from a skill perspective and just the decision making overall was really, really good. They got off to an amazing start. So it's it's a bit too hard to to, to look at that and be like, okay, Renegades really messed it up. Honestly, NIP, NIP played out of their minds. So against CLG, they're going to have a lot more opportunity to show their individual skill and what they can do just generally as a team on Dust2. As we will see, Renegades already with a very aggressive opening. We see Yam just poking up middle there, trying to see what's going on as as it pops out of short as well. Not actually finding in the way of kills just yet. And that is just due to CLG taking it easy. They're going to be going towards long instead. He's still on the site. As a, looking to push short, but Ethan's still holding an angle, so maybe we'll see frags there. In the meantime, he's still trying to hold things down. That's a good start. Two headshots for him. Still got the range, and he's got most of his, most of his life intact. He can slow down these uh, last two players on the long area. Flash comes in. No one down just yet. In the meantime, Ethan's been taken down towards mid. That one, that's been won by Renegades as well. Can the bomb go down, though? Yeah, it's definitely looking quite hard here right now for Renegades to get back in. A bit of a crossfire coming into play for CLG. Might be difficult, though, with the help. These two players for CLG. That said, it's going to be Renegades with a quick headshot from JKS onto Subrosa on the bomb site, leaving Kusta in a somewhat awkward situation. A Glock at very long range. It's going to be very, very difficult for him to do anything with this. And the full defuse is just coming in. Full confidence for JKS in Rick's ability to cover him and for him to just be safe. Kust safe as houses. Kusta's picked off towards the end there. He'd have to headshot JKS twice from that range to actually kill him with the uh, lowly Glock. Unfortunately for Kusta, so Renegades get off to the start they wanted, the start they needed. And again, you still have a such great range here. Puts himself in a very awkward position, most of his body covered. Good stuff. And again, Ethan was the lurker here. I think he picked off one there, but he was ultimately taken down. CLG, they've got a bomb plant, so they'll be looking for the AKs in the following round. Hence, they will have uh, a small buy in this round. Three flashbangs, only two pistols picked up. So I think the idea is to get the bomb down, and again, it could be the gauntlet towards the short position. With three flashes, they can get one onto ramp as well, which could help them. There's the first one to get past the initial, pop, uh, the initial choke point. So now quite spread, and there's the last flash out. Can they get to plant the bomb? The bomb's on the floor at the moment, but down goes Rike. So there's opportunity. Yeah, pretty good job by CLG for damage so far, considering that they didn't invest too much. Bomb almost going down, but not quite. That would have been a pretty sad situation for Renegades to allow that after losing two members on the bomb site. But uh, CLG, they can go for, of course, the mightiest of buys here as the AKs come into play. And again, Renegades having lost two players there, that will set them back a little bit, but they, of course, will have a four by. But no AWP, and that's that's going to be a, somewhat of an issue as CLG are going to have quite a strong situation when it comes to picks, just because AKs versus M4s, you're definitely favoring AKs a little bit in that situation. Renegades will keep things somewhat simple to begin, though, with a, standard, a somewhat standard setup as uh, going towards mids, leaving... The A site itself somewhat open, but only if the proper grenades come in from CLG to deny Ricker anything by car. He's still looking around the smoke. Top Rosa maybe looking for an opening. You see the bombs being left towards long. There's still lots of time though, so it doesn't really mean much. CLG clearing the short position for now. We'll see if they head towards middle doors, something that may have been lacking from some dust twos we saw yesterday. CT is able to uh, hold that fairly easily for the most part. As is on Xbox in CT spawn, just jumping down as the T's start to emerge, repositioning. So we'll see if that favors him or not. He can get headshot between the dots of that box. You don't often see people shoot it, but uh, it would shoot him straight in the head if he's deep into that corner. So the split is on, it seems. The bomb going through middle doors as well. Just one lurker towards B tunnels. Immediately coming out into CT spawn though, as a in for one frag. The distraction's very key though, but at the same time, the split really does its damage. Coming in from the tunnels as well allows a clean B bomb site, and the bomb can make its way across from middle. And that bomb can be planted now as well, giving Renegades a two versus three after plant scenario on the B bomb site. Not the best place to find yourself in on a dust two. Ricky will be making his way into dark. Will he? check Hayes' position. It's very hard. There's two angles to check at once. And that is why that position can be quite strong. Leaving is still low. Now, 
against three players all alone with a flashbang and not much else really going for him as far as utility, but in goes one push from Sabrosa. It's not going to go too well for him, but it's all okay. all okay. CLG will take the round anyway. So straight up B split seems to do the job. Yeah, they've got their first buy in and being the uh, third round, not quite the money for Renegades. If it was a double eco from CLG or a force buy fail and an eco, then Renegades might have the money to buy in the following round. But as that's the third round, not the fourth round, they are going to be on the eco immediately with uh, Eustelo's save gun, Renegades, that is. So here we go. See if CLG can even the score. Looks quite likely, all things considered. Question is, how do they play Eustelo? in this round, being the, uh, he, he, he can go beast mode for Renegades and he'll need to in this round as the only man with a primary gun. Grenade goes down to obscure vision of how many players are crossing or when they're crossing as well. And again, you still have, with a very forward angle, lovely grenade from CLG. They have to expect that uh, Renegades have to go risk taking. Hayes in that usual position around the pillar. Oh, the crouch peak though is not good enough and you still have indeed. He will double the AKs on the team. Yeah, that's a really big play. Color coming in, he wants to try to get some damage in there, prevent the AK from being picked up, but he's unsuccessful. Yam comes in from Thors. Oh, that is big. Now a five versus three. That forces CLG to just go for the play straight away onto a side. They can't oh, mess man. around, but the damage is amazing for Ricky, despite a mere USP, almost taking down Sabrosa, who is fully armored with a helmet and everything. This is not good. The bomb will be planted, and there is a, there is actually a kit on Eustillo still, so you Renegades have a solid opportunity here. Yeah, the lack of armor, though. Kusta should have a good opportunity to mow these players down, but emerge in the numbers. Very well done. Just good for one kill, Kusta. Ethan's got the range. But there's a smoke on Azana. There's a smoke on Azana. He's deploying the smoke. They're going to win the round, Dan. They're going to win the round. Some rows of less than 10 HP can't do anything. There's one kill in the anti eco from CLG. There's one kill that. Oh, man. That is amazing. <laughs> they actually had pretty much full anti eco. Obviously, one saved AK. Great crouch peak in Upper Dark to just set things up here for Renegades. And one by one, they take down CLG. And they pick up a lot of it. They pick up three additional AKs. That is insane. And you can see the looks across the faces of the CLG players. They know that that was not good. <laughs> that was not good at all. Yeah, I mean, it was it was unfortunate. Well, there's a number of issues, right? Hayes' position towards the pillar is a is a normal position. It's a common position that uh, T's play at the beginning of the round. So if there's a push from the CTs, if there's a pop flash and so on, then, then you're obscured as hard to shoot you because the pillar's there and that pillar is solid. You can't shoot through it. Um, but I think Taking the left angle of the pillar, he gave himself a blind spot on the right angle, then went for the crouch peak straight into the crosshairs. So it's unfortunate timing for him. Um, I mean, he could have chosen a gap angle on the right side as well. But then Cutler is sandwiched between the plays. He's got no cover when, when the CTs push through middle doors. And that pretty much crushes crushes the round at that point because they've got two AKs and there's no kills for CLG. Now it's time to turn to be on the eco. Rike has got a nice angle. Continuation fire will take down the Sub Rosa and he's got great support from low ground and the high ground, but that support has disappeared then. Oh dear, that's a little bit weird. A lot of fragging coming in from the pistols there. Renegade's aggression seems like it's going to bite them in the backside. And that's unfortunate. They're going to even if they win the round, they're going to lose a lot of their AKs. And this was a round that they could have won fairly cleanly, which would have set them up massively well after picking up so many weapons for free in the previous round. So this is this is very good for CLG, obviously, in that pers from that perspective. JKS looking for the play here, as the bomb is now being spotted by Ustilo, which gives a lot of information to the Renegade's side, because they know that CLG have to go and pick up the bomb eventually. They have to go to the bomb at some point. And the position of Ustilo is quite strong, because he can always check. He's got a very... Uh, a very good vantage point to check A. Lots of warnings should the players be approaching from his flank. So he still is in a great spot. JKS though does get caught unawares, but he's still able to adjust. And here comes the second one on one. He's still low. He will close it down. And Renegades, they win the round, but they did lose quite a lot there. Yeah, flurry of action in the middle area and at the end. CLG just giving uh, using the clock to give uh, Renegades time to hang themselves, but they chose not to do so. But that bomb going down in that position was brutal. I don't know how that, that Deagle kill came in um, towards the end there. Maybe it was the uh, the spray recall recovery. One of the uh, updates to the game in the last year. Anyway, we've got a short push coming in from Renegades at the moment. Two players and you see uh, Rikki's in a boost position, but 
Got to be scared of the ramp angle as well, which you still will be holding. Normally, you'll see a, f uh, a flashbang in this position before Cutler will peek. And there's the flashbang. Cutler peeks, doesn't see anything. Maybe he'll be in for a nasty surprise later. Azza's got the long area, so uh, they could have held that position for a, a while. But then if the short push comes in, they may be unable to recover. But they've gone for a rotation towards long, so maybe you have a read that there might be a long push. And they're correct. No action on short means uh, long on this occasion. Can they retake it though? Misudo with one kill there. Spots Ethan between blue. He goes down as well. And now that leaves uh, Kusa in an awkward position. He's carrying the bomb, so he can't try and trade frag, because if he loses the bomb, that's GG. Yeah, this really sucks. There's only two smokes left on CLG as well, so their options become somewhat limited. They can't really split a bomb, so they have to go all together here. It's perfect on the entries. Entry perfection is not the case, as a one kill, free dink onto the second player. That just cripples the push far too much. And Renegades coming out with a 5-1 scoreline, really setting CLG back. CLG have not been having a good time of it at the early days here of, of a, a dust two against Renegades. Yeah, that's a much better round for Renegades. Four players surviving after the hardship of the previous one. That's uh, very important going forward. Still the early stages of this half. CLG on the eco now. Nothing but pistols looking to maim the economy of Renegades once again. Just the one Deagle onto Cutler, the rest on P250s. Starting off with some tagging, but uh, will not amount to much. Okay, holding the angle for lower tunnel. Oh! Sure he would have got that if he didn't move his crosshair. JKS, he's got to be careful now. He's got to move back because he doesn't want that gun to be collected should he go down. He wants to make it as hard as possible for CLG to get anywhere near him. As a force back as well. You still though, on the flank already. Flank being waited for as a popped in the meantime. Things getting awkward now for Renegades. Yeah, positionally, it's not the best times for the likes of Rick here with that AWP, to be honest. And that is why. That is why he gets domed there by the P250 of Ethan. Now guns all over the place to be collected, and indeed they will be. Ace finds himself, and oh, that's a pretty nice pickup. Misses the drag shot there, but Ethan, an ace for him, just out of nowhere, cleaning up every single player. That was insane. What the devil is going on, Dan? What is happening <laughs> in this? In this? Uh, oh man, that, I mean, it was even it was really awkward for for Rick. Obviously, he's there with the P250 because he's got the AWP, but his teammates behind him, but JKS is, is in red health. He's got less than 20 HP as well. So even with JKS for support, it's still awkward for the side. Renegades just caught out in bad positions and uh, what a collapse of a round. Both teams on a buy, though. Both teams on the AWP as well. I, think, I wonder if Subrosa was spotted there. Usulo was completely blind moving towards the ramp, so I don't know if, I've, if either player's been spotted. There's a Molotov coming out. The smoke's there, though, to allow the escape. Long abandoned by CLG. Yeah, that's a, that's a big win there for Renegades because CLG, they spent time, they invested resources, and now they actually go for it. Well, Subrosa comes in for another challenge and even dies, so a lot invested in nothing, essentially, for CLG. Nothing gained... Now it's uh, plan B, perhaps quite literally, as they go for a split onto the one side. Great pop flash coming in from Yam there, but it's only good for a single kill for Azza. But the information was picked up. It was gleaned. Azza saw that the bomb carrier was in by the double door position. And now the rest of CLG rallying together to burst out of the tunnels. But this setup, this crossfire is stunning stuff. JKS with all the three, all three kills, and that will be six to two. For Renegades. All that movement in the tunnel. JKS hears that all day. Allows his teammate to play the bait position towards the door and the cleanup is easy. So even though it's six to two, like it's a difficult half so far for both teams. That's a that's a rarely played um a blind spot these days. So teams don't always check for it. But again, if you if you have a, a bait setup towards B then it becomes incredibly powerful, especially when players are just charging in on that T side. Ethan looking for an early pick of the Deagle. No such luck. You still have a very forward position. So Brozo almost caught out. Only got a Tech 9 to offer, no armor. So we can't really afford to re-peak that angle. Ethan, the only man with uh, Kevlar in this round. Kustar smoking a flash. I don't know what just happened there. Someone, was that a team wound? It must have been. Ooh, the nays are good. But they know that they're there. I mean, they, they pushed up a dog pretty much at the start of the round. Already flanking into T-spawn. 
CLG's expiration date is about to, about to be realized here. JKS on the flank. They are locked in pretty much. Lester Barosa can take down JKS, which he will the deck nine. So <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, that's uh, sloppy play. That's a sloppy play, man. It's bad angles. Not safe to get the uh, flashbang out. Rick A. At least he gets some information. There's no one in B now for the CT side. So again, it's becoming awkward. The trade's from Cutler, but what can CLG do from this position? Cutler somehow in CT spawn, but can they get the bomb to B? It needs to run up the ramp at the moment. And with Ucillo there and Rickey on the flank, it is a run for your, run for your life, Hayes. You've got to get through that window. This is really weird. Oh, it's come to this from the positions earlier in this round. I mean, they don't. it's unlikely here that CLG will be able to hold on. We'll have to see. Hayes in a good spot, but with no Kevlar, as soon as he gets tagged, he can't do anything. Even though falling back with the M45 does so much damage, almost kills everybody left on Renegades. But still, the round will go to Renegades. But once again, we're in, we're in a spot where, with the positioning that they had, it was very realistic, very likely that they wouldn't lose a single player, yet they lose three in the end. A very messy game of plus two so far. The knives are out, they're fighting in the swamp. Another timeout from CLG. Again, there's, there's no time to warm up in this in this system. You've got to be you got to be ready to ready to pop at, from the beginning. So once again, we'll see a buy round from both sides. AWP in tow onto Rick and to Kusta. Sub Rosa hasn't bought just yet. But I'm sure an AK will be coming out. So Despite the the anarchy in most of these rounds, it's Renegades who have a five-round lead at the moment. Yeah, I do fear for COG with the way it's going, just because the T side of Renegades is, I think, it's a side that they'll find more comfort on in a lot of spots. Because, it, I mean, we saw yesterday another good illustration of the pace that Renegades like to play with. They love to play with a fast pace. And if they're hitting their entries, it's very hard to deal with. So looking forward to that. But first, we are back into a buy versus buy here. Challenge onto Long. He's still have flashed in by his teammates and also by the T's themselves. And he will end up going down to Cutler there. So this time, COG are able to claim Long. Rookie's position is quite risky, though, because once he's spotted, how does he escape this angle? The smoke's still there. He's going to make a run for it. There's a player on the ramp, though, and Rookie will get taken down. So that risk didn't pay off for him. We've got Ethan now on a short position, but he'll get taken down. Nice play from Azar. JKS in for support as well. Good positioning from these CTs. Finally, there's a trade, but it's Abrosa alone versus two. So much damage there from the likes of Azar and JKS. Forced to take short, and they will. And now Sabrosa against two. Can he do it? One has pretty low health as Azza, but he will get the frag easily for the triple in this round. Great stuff there from Azza and JKS on the A bomb site. It was an awkward spot. They lost long fast. It seemed like they had a half-hearted attempt to reclaim it. So positionally, they weren't in a good spot to do so, yet they somehow still get the frags, as we can see Azza right here pushing that short position. Yeah, great play between Azza and JKS. You have to wonder when someone gets multi frags like that if one of the guys are just like, mate, good on you, mate. <laughs> Big anyway, one, one of the biggest issues, despite the anarchy in these rounds, is that it's CLG whose uh, economy is in the bin. They haven't strung any rounds together, just been individual rounds, then a reset from Renegades. And I think both their rounds, oh, actually, one was an AK round. But they've come close a number of times with the pistols. And it's pistols once again. You still have taken down early. Yam towards B on his lonesome at the moment. And uh, Rike finds himself in CT spawn instead of, I think it was Azza who was there earlier. So he's going to have to hold down any uh, potential Russian rotation with the AWP. So again, this is a potentially awkward setup for Renegades. That said, well, I was going to say it's unlikely CLG would go through mid, but they've got a smoke onto Ethan, so it's possible. Yeah, just sitting still and seeing if slowing down the pace will help them. Renegades are a team that does like to be aggressive, but holding their, their spots for now. And they don't have any mid presence, really, although JKS is moving into that position just now, so he's going to be able to give Yam some comfort that he doesn't have to look into two spots at once. So this does give a lot of inf inf information. And that just raised a challenge with no warning there. Obviously, no nothing in the way of utilities to work with. That will be... Lovely for Rick here. Ooh, gotta be careful. He's just gonna go down to Ethan there. Add it again with the P250s, Ethan. Finally does go down, but 9 2 is the scoreline. Despite a lot of these rounds being not being so clean, being scrappy, it is still 9 2. 
Kustar uh, on the AWP once again, or or is he? What's going on here? Okay, Nathan's uh, Nathan. Ethan's got a spawn for long, so he's going to start with the AWP, try and get a pick, and then no doubt throw the AWP over to Kusta. Having a quick look at the uh, CT spawns. I mean, he should get flashed off his angle. Renegades have been pretty good at doing that. But we'll see if he can get a pick in. He still likes to drop a flashbang of his own before he goes around the corner. And there we go. Blind Ethan has, has to take a pot shot, but Renegades' timing will be superior. He's with an alternative angle towards... Oh, here we go. No flash, though. So he should see some barrels first, because this is the last place they're going to aim. Oh, but he walks into the angle, and Ricky's ready for it. Early pick for Renegades. Early pick for Renegades, indeed. That's that's what's been. Uh, we've seen that quite commonly that they get this this early advantage. Well, that COG's openings haven't been doing so well, and it gets a bit worse. Yeah, and with a lovely fadeaway shot on shorts, and once again, CLG are somewhat committed now. They've got to do something with such a disadvantage to try to level things. But can they level them off? Flash comes in. Kusta goes for the peak. Nades go in. They're lining up there. Nice headshot from Kusta. Looking for the second on the flick. Doesn't find it just yet, as we have only one player left in Kusta. He's the only hope, but there is no hope to be found. 10 to 2 now as Renegades. Once again, they seem to just cl like win in the early round most of the time. Look at all these grenades on, on CLG. I don't know that they uh, use many of them. Like, there's three players on the short position, and they're choosing to, to just... Uh, Peak basically They're playing for picks, so I, so I do wonder why why they've bought all that utility. Because again, I think mouse bots are a great example on their T side on Dust Two. They're flashing all these angles around a short position. And Cloud but, Nine, yeah, and Cloud Nine as of late as well. After mouse bots wrecked them at E League on Dust Two, they uh, learned the hard way the the value of the utility. So we have another timeout from CLG. Don't have many left. This is the third one in one half from the CLG side. But uh, yeah, they're just like you bought all that utility, not really using it, and just getting just losing all the picking play. It's a big deal. Why is this match so easy for Renegades? I don't know, man. Actually, <laughs> I guess some of the rounds have been pretty scrappy. Although that said, again, it does seem like Renegades are sort of outskilling CLG in a lot of these early picking scenarios. And as James said, we're not seeing CLG get the most out of their utility, really. And so get the most out of, sometimes use enough of it at all. Either way, the Tech Nines are in again for CLG. And we get the push in through Double Doors, as is their caught off guard. But there's still two players on B to contest with. Lewis Acoust has been selling a fake with his uh, long push. He's been taken down now. JKS completely blind. He has a play for support. That's Yam, but Yam can't get a kill on the cover. Now JKS is in trouble. Can he get both kills? He can't. Opportunity for the bomb to go down for the CLG side. Both players on rifles. It is a force by. They've got their, their armor. The bomb's not getting planted, though. They're looking to uh, pick off some more of these players before planting the bomb. And it's working well so far. One for one, though. They know where Usilo is, but does he know where Subrosa is? That's the question. Minute 10 for Subrosa to play with. Chance and opportunity has been afforded CLG. Is Subrosa to clutch it, though? He's got some time to work with. He's still trying to find those angles. Where exactly is Subrosa? I think he hears him. I think he knows exactly what's going on. Headshot angle played with, but Sabrosa will find the frag. He's still a, he's a, I was expecting him to take it down there, but it's to be a third round for CLG. Of these three rounds, I think I think only the first round they won was an actual buy um, from the CLG side, like a like a full buy rather, with AKs and so on. And the other two have been eco or force. There was a round where uh, CLG went for a sp uh, an A split on on an eco round which was uh, interesting compared to their first attempt when they were trying to get the bomb down. But didn't manage that. So they've got a good buy. They've got a better buy than Renegades. Yam down to the Deagle. That's not going to shy a Renegades away from being aggressive, however. Ethan's waiting for it. Got Kusta and T-Spawn as well. But they get the frags. It's like they, they just about heard it in time there. I was worried for them. Lots of damage done. Will the nade finish anybody off? No, doesn't find anything. Now, down to Rickett. And I was going to say, we haven't seen a huge amount of stuff from Rickard just yet. He hasn't needed to do, go too crazy, but that's a good start. And with who are these players very low, that's just one bullet from the Deagle that would either finish off Ethan or Sabrosa. So CLG, despite the man advantage, this is very dangerous for them. It's like they're going back to B now as well. CLG with an opportunity to give themselves a lifeline going into the second half. Three rounds would suck. There's opportunity for five. The bomb's creeping in, though. So is Rickett, but he can't take the frag. 
And uh, finally, CLG are winning some jewels. But the last man is on the B-bomb that is JKS. Gets himself to one versus one, but he can't win that one either. That round fell apart for Renegades. And uh, I'm curious as to what their money's going to be like for the last round now. It's going to suck down. They've got about $2,000 per person. So CLG in a strong position to get a fifth round. Yeah, it seems like CLG, who were kind of stuck on two for a while, quite a while actually. Looks like they have a good step. They're in good stead to scrape together five for this first half, which does give them something to work with moving into the second half. That's, that is, uh, that said, it is really weighing on the fact that they do close this one down. Even though they were against pistols, we've seen pistols do a lot of work in this series so far. Push is coming in from JKS, perhaps, or just playing behind the smoke, as we see Azza playing close to the smoke in middle as well. He's looking for the information to give to his team. And CLG, as long as they move as a unit, they should really be fine here. Just due to the fact that Renegades are very spread out. Four Molotovs on the CLG side. I think that smoke was down from the uh, from the CTs. As it can run destruction now, and you still may try to capitalize on this. Jumping through though, and Ethan's close enough to punish. It was a gun to be collected there. The gamble didn't pay off, and Renegades have to gamble in this situation. Four T's left, and there are two CTs, so at this point, they may just want to all go together towards one of these sites. We see uh, Rick here towards long, JKS looking to eventually flank. That gun should probably be disposed of by the T's, but they've left that AK on short, which I'm um, no doubt uh, JKS will pick up. If, Ren if Rikke can survive while he picks that up, then maybe there's some work to be done, but that's unlikely. JKS doesn't see the AK, unfortunately, and that is the last round in favor of CLG. So it is to be the 5-10. So CLG, they, there is some small recovery in the last couple rounds at the end of the first half. But it, overall, it was a, it was not a a great first half for them. And the problem is, is that they're going to be going going against an aggressive renegade. So renegades that enjoys a good T side, they have a fast pace. They like to play it, play it. Uh, well, they like to play it in, in I guess a pretty simple fashion. But it, that that has dust two. You know, that's dust two basically. That it dust two. You can play it very simply. You don't have to go for the information plays. You get so many open spaces. All you need is an AK and some good timing. And a tra enough trade fragger there along with you, and you can do a lot of th a lot of work. So, CLG, the pistol is really a must. Can't let Renegades get off to a good start in the second half. CLG do not look in good spirits, I must say. No, and this is this is their you know maybe it's their last hurrah with this team. We see Cutler; he's at the bottom of the scoreboard, but not bottom of the kills. There are some players with six. But you still owe, again, often the beast man for Renegades really came into his own once he joined this team um, and, hit, and hit a new peak in terms of personal performance up there on the scoreboard for, for Renegades. Yeah, I mean, like, the major, maybe the biggest opportunity for this team to do something, CLG. So the head needs, needs to be in the right place. Renegades taking the long area. Kusta should hear that from that short position. So Broza looking for the picks that Yusilo got last time, but he's going to be forced back from a flashbang. That, that's a great flashbang. That is a great flashbang. There's no more flashes to be used, though. They're going to smoke the crossover. It's not perfect coverage, but it should be just enough. And indeed, look at the position that they get to without losing a single player. And they've closed the distance. It's exactly how you do it. This is a very dangerous round. This is a very dangerous team. And he still is going to just line up a couple players there, knock them down by the short position. And you can see that everyone from Renegades wants to face. They want to fight as it comes in for the backstab. But he will get taken down immediately. He's starting to look very bad now. Just JKS against three. Two of these players are heavily tagged though. Oh man, it's plus headshots at the third one. Goodbye. That is uh, a solid recovery. I think Renegades would have been frustrated if they'd lost that pistol run, especially with the flank there. Headshots required, but none found. But nothing but headshots from JKS towards the end. Crushing stuff, but oh, I hope you see the replay of the uh, of the flank. When someone has Kevlar, you're going to be shooting their, their chest for days. So you've got to make sure you get those headshots in just like JKS. Oh, Bish, bash, bosh, bingo, bango, bongo, whatever you like. Oh man, that was great. Oh wow, Renegades getting themselves that pistol. It's gonna certainly make DCLG feel much more dejected than otherwise they already or perhaps than they already did, which was fairly deflated and dejected. But now early pick off for Renegades, that's beautiful. That's uh, that's that goes a long way on Dust too. Oh another one as well, you still are putting in the work. 
And all they have to do now is just go together somewhere, anywhere. It doesn't matter. It doesn't get simpler than that, and they will be fine. So it's all good. That angle uh, you still have is holding. After you got the first kill, I have a bind on my mouse. Uh, R underscore clear decals, which basically removes the bullets and blood from the walls. Because once you once you kill someone, you've got the blood on the wall. It can be hard to see somebody who's speaking, but it's a it's it's client side, so it's different for different people. So I tend to clear that to uh, keep the map clean. Speaking of clean, this round is pretty clean. This is a this is a clean round so far. Yes, it is. I was I was wondering after that those three headshots if someone said mate. <laughs> Good day, mate. I'm 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 not going for the trimp on the Barbie jokes. Okay. You know, in Australia, they uh, you can refer to a woman in general as as, a, as Sheila or a Sheila. That's really weird. Yeah. She Sheila Sheila. We have an Aussie in the office, so I call her Sheila every now and then. Seven round lead for Renegades. So some statistics for you for those of you who like pen paper and spreadsheets. Um. Any any team who went zero and two in Cologne did not qualify for the major through the Swiss system. So the percentages, the the chances for one of these teams will go down considerably should they lose this map. Two flashes onto Kustart, some pistols here and there. CLG with four players towards mid slash B and Cutler alone towards the A site. It's like maybe Ethan's wanting to get aggressive in middle there. But Renegades have generally been better with their flashbangs to not get caught off too much. There's a kill, there's a trade, there it is. That goes down as well. He's still, low. still at work with the AK-47. No. Good damage. He will die in the end, but that is beautiful overall. I mean, if you, comp if you switch it over, when Renegades were in that position on the CT side, it was not nearly as clean for CLG each time they attempted these rounds. So. Renegades, they built some decent bank behind themselves, but now all they have to do is deal with Kusta's AWP and it's smooth sailing from there. I was panicking when he started pushing through those doors with the AK, but he had two players very close in CT, so it was fine. Everything was fine. Renegades, one of the, uh, can be one of the more coordinated teams. And indeed, there was some coordination around that AK push, which is nice. So we have a fast play from Renegades into the long area. Sub so though, making his way to ramp, avoiding the flat bank for the most part, but can he save his teammates? He can't. Now he's blind. Yam will take him down. Three kills for Yam. What has happened to this round? This round has completely fallen apart, and CLG, they are probably in the mind to save here. There's nothing they can do on the A side, but already Stillo is creeping. He's lurking. He's looking for some fresh blood. Can he find something? Looks like he will. Hayes will die in the sights, and so will Cutler by CT. That leaves Renegades now with just two more rounds to close this down in very dominating fashion. Now you can see once they've gone into this T side, it just everything looks way less scrappy for them. Yam, though, with that double, and then the, then the finding the Sabrosa in the pit, that's just Mate. that's just the round done. That is the round done. Uh, speaking of done, CLG are done with timeouts now. They've called their last one and it has six seconds remaining. I don't see much talking going on from uh, anybody, but maybe they just need a breather. That said, we can only see four of the five players, so perhaps player number five is talking. There's their coach, I'm a pet. Very interesting nickname he has. Um, but I mean, he has introduced some interesting strats. I made a video of the, uh, the monster push on overpass that CLG did once. I don't know if they did it again, but that was really cool. That said, they uh, you know they showed some potential, they showed some learning and improvement, but um, we're not seeing much of that at the moment on Dust2. It's very true. Silo looking to push along here. He's, ooh, the flash comes in. A bunch of CTs here. JKS, does he want anything to do with this? It's like, Gonna throw a molly onto the AK, but you can't destroy or melt the AK with a Molotov, unfortunately. That uh, will be up for grabs there for Sabrosa. Ooh, he's got a crazy JKS so low! JKS gets it though. Four versus three. Renegades are so close to winning this one now. I did not realize this would be so, so easy for them. It is a dominating performance so far. Hayes falling to the flames, as will Kusta. Good play from JKS. Again, just a smart decision making. He uh, didn't push long because that's how the round falls apart. 
with uh, that kind of stuff. Just right, I'm gonna I'm gonna back off and chill. I'm gonna delay them picking up this weapon and entertain them while uh, my other teammates close out the round. Rickes picked up the auto sniper to begin with, so we are gonna see some spam inbox jihad from Rickey. The popo. They've got a battering ram, and they're at your front door. It's like living in Hackney. Some good damage with the color too with that. Actually tags him through the door multiple times. Feels bad. We've got some basically Renegade spread out all over the place here. Looking oh man, are you still oh, are you serious? Are you serious? He's going for it for his P. Oh somehow finds the headshot into Cutlass creeping through the smoke. Oh, that is robbery. And now Raz is looking for his opening towards A. He's gonna go for it. He's alone. What can he do here? He knows somebody's around. He spots the trajectory of that flashbang from below. But is look, he knows the guy's on the car position. Spots the Broza. Will he be able to win the battle? The battle continues, and it will be Kuster's. Good delivery by Kuster on a very awkward angle. Renegades in the meantime moving towards the B a bomb site. Hayes is there with the AWP and that is great positioning. The bomb's down as well, but he misses the shot on Tisolo. Lovely shoulder peeking, but he's got Rekke to entertain as well. Just the pre-fire spam with the auto sniper. Not going to work out. They've got the bomb site and the CTs are very far away. Health is really low on Yustilo though. He's got four points of health. Can CLG save the bacon? Or the bacon, will it be saved? Kuster and Sabrosa coming in now. Oh, opportunity struck there for Istilo. He used, wanted to use the distraction there, but the distraction was not good enough. Down to JKS, there's number one. All he has to do is kill Kuster now, and Kuster, he's running out of time. He does have a kit, though. JKS waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Here's Kuster onto the bomb. There's the peak. Kuster nails JKS. Does he have time? Just about. <laughs> Great delivery, special delivery by Kusta, but is it enough or is it a consolation round for CLG? Renegades have bags of money. I can't believe Rickey was pre, pre, going for a pre-fire with an auto sniper into the B bomb site. That's quite hilarious. He's got a spawn to try and get a pick. What he might do in this situation is move towards the left of the tunnel and try and pick a player off as he jumps onto the platform. Because once you're on there, if you stand up, you're exposed. Doesn't matter what, you are, what you're doing or where you are. So it's a good angle for AWPers to hold. Got to be careful though of uh, somebody coming close. So better to single scope than double scope. Fast smoke though will deny him the opportunity. Renegades have so, Renegades have so much freedom to move around and do whatever they want individually. That uh, this is always going to look rough for CLG, them, you know, being pl able to play from such an advantage, and have the inherent confidence that goes with that. That said, is there a flashbang? No, and Kuster will punish. You must flash, or you will die. Yeah, man. I mean, again, just look at Mouse Sports play. T side does too. They flash every single angle. Always think back to that when I see people get wrecked. Very fast shot from Kusta. Hot to to, uh, to to hit that shot that quickly. So there's a man advantage for CLG, but they are just going to play passive. They'll be at the mercy of Renegades. Should have Ren Renegades have anything in plan, in mind. Smoke for the corner of Long. Perhaps they've got some flashbangs as well. So they're in position to go for the split, and CLG aren't really in position to go for a short push in response because Subros is in uh, in CT spawn. That remember, so they need to hold Long. Kusa's there as well. Lovely stuff. He's really disabling this Renegade's push. Only two plays left. Spots the bomb, but he can't keep things alive over there. So, we've got Yang on the rotation now as Ricky tries to hold the short position down. And CLG have to fight for map control as well. Renegades can't afford to stop running, really, at this point. There's 20 seconds to plant the bomb. So, that's going to tell the CTs everything they need to know. They're all in position in CT. I mean, it can be better from the perspective of their positioning, but we'll have to see whether the bomb can even go down because there's fire all over the place. The bomb needs to be planted. Eight seconds, seven seconds. There it is. Three and a half seconds to plant the bomb. And it will go down onto the short position. Too many spots to look, though. They've got to be perfect. Rick here takes down one. Now Yam and a one versus two. Close range. Can't find the headshot. And that's going to be another round going towards CLG. However, how long can they keep this going? They are losing a lot of players every time. The bomb goes down. The last bonus starts to build. And there is chunks of cash chunks of death ready to be deployed for renegades i was waiting for a boost to come in uh, for clg because that bomb was planted so late but maybe they wouldn't have got there in time but uh if they if they boost then they may win the round just like that
But uh, there we go. The retake works out for them as well. I think they survived with two players, so all good in the hood for CLG. But again, they're eight rounds behind their opponents who have another buy. I thought they might have been broke, but no. We've got AWPs and all sorts, and uh, they've got a reasonable amount of cash. That if they plant the bomb and lose the round, they probably have another buy just again and again. So if they can keep picking off players and keeping the economy poor for CLG, then it may be an inevitability. But don't count them out just yet. Ethan, he's in trouble. Doesn't need to rotate, though. He's still in a very forward position. JKS going to contribute to that spray. Takes up Rosa down. They're two in B, though. Hayes starting off the proceedings and finishing JKS as well. As they're waiting patiently in the forward position, he needs to get that bomb at some point, and that smoke is going to go away. And when it's, once it does, he will have an even harder time to cross to get the bomb. So should there be action? Well, at least Yam has another smoke, which can be deployed to that position. As it perhaps wants to use the opportunity here, other clear CT spawn to get a pick off. But it is he who will be picked off. Yeah, I'm in a one versus three now. As he looks for additional opposition to slay. But I think that's going to be quite difficult from him, for him in this position. There's uh, plenty of players to cover all the, the relevant spots here for CLG. So Yam yeah, should not be able to get any, anything done here. I think we're going to see another buy from Renegades in the next round. Yam can, he, he, he's happy to die off the time. And again, it's just about damage. If he can do, if he can make this really expensive for CLG, then, uh, and just weaken their buy in the following round, then they can just keep that pressure up. Kusta peeking, but he's seen Yam close. He's peeking in fact, rather. So three players surviving for CLG with two orbs in tow. That is Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, one at a time. Steady does it. What do we have here for Renegades? They do indeed have enough to buy, so we would be surprised if they don't. They are actually the ones who have uh, called a timeout now, though, and they are perhaps discussing their options. How can we just close this one down? Because perhaps they're starting to lose that, uh, that good feeling inside when you just string loads of rounds together, when you get, you know, it looks like you're unstoppable, but then all of a sudden, the wind gets taken out of, your, out of your sails. Lots of discussion on Renegade's tactical timeout. Stark comparison to the ones we've seen from CLG in this game. And indeed, Renegades have the cash, but now you can see it's finally running low. But again, a plants can make the difference. Moving forward, no tag through the doors. Double pick coming in. Early advantage, CLG. It's a big deal. However, Renegades, looks like they want to explode out of the double doors, which is actually Really, really cool to see. There's lots of possibilities here. Flash comes in, pushes Cutler off the angle just for a moment. Repeat does it, though. That's a nice shot from Cutler. Gets the leg as well. Onto Azza. The no-scope comes in. Cutler doesn't stop. He has support in Hayes to cover his back. That is a B-bomb site that will well and truly be under lock and key as Kuster claims the final man, allowing CLG to have a flawless round there in round 24. Clean round. Renegades uh, should be on the eco now. Heading towards maximum loss bonus following the conclusion of this round. That is oh a glorious shot from God. Kusta. I don't know how much he saw of that. Maybe maybe 5%, but that was enough. But again, it's a nice flashy kill, but there's still six rounds against match points versus Renegades. Renegades, they have 3,400 if they lose this round. So that means they can buy a reasonable amount of weaponry. Looking for a fast play in towards the B-bomb site. Again, there are two players there. Loads of people flying on both sides. Emerging from the smoke, emerging into the bullets, into the Gatling guns. But the kills are in, and now they can plant the bomb. Yeah, there's an opportunity for sure with this. They do have an AWP onto Yam now. So it starts to get very worrisome. Oh my god, that was a little bit close. Yam still looking. But Yam was yet to find. Another flash comes in. Gets the tag there. This is getting scary for CLG. But Yam is in a very poor position. Has to pull up the Tech 9. Nice flash, but I think that flash actually caught the CLG player as well. Tech 9 comes out. That's going to be able to drop Cutler straight away. Yam tries to make his escape, but he won't be able to make it happen. The defuse will come in with plenty of time. 
allowing CLG to find them themselves into double digits now. Plenty of cash though on Renegade. Bonus money at this point, that bomb plant. Five more rounds for CLG. And at this point, they have to be starting to believe that they can do this and take it to overtime. They've had double ops for quite a while and it continues on the uh, CT side, but now we have Renegades putting out the second orb onto Yam. Ricky and Yam going to go for it. So uh, how many orbs will we see in the middle area? There's Ricky. In the meantime, Yam is making a play towards the long position. We'll see if CLG are as good with the flashes. We've got uh, Subrosa jumping past the angle already. Maybe a nasty surprise as half of Yam's health gone. And he'll be forced away. Subrosa looking like... He wanted to get aggressive for a second, but he would just go for the re-smoke and play close on double doors of the longhouse. Renegade, so they're going to go for that A split. It's been a while since we saw the A split from Renegades. It's a round that they're pretty good at executing. Yeah, flashbangs on to short this time. Renegades have learned their lesson. Yeah, and they are in position to toss a bunch of nades into A, or they will be soon. But it looks like they want to catch somebody in a rotation, perhaps. And seeing very limited presence on middle, I think, should encourage a B play, just because if they are playing that three-man A setup, which they are right now, it's much the rotation is much longer. And they don't really have the flanking potential as you're rushing up middle. But we will see that A play. We saw this against NIP as well. The Nades will be sailing in soon. Can they disable Kusta with them, though? That is the critical factor about these, this utility from Renegades. Quite, that's quite the wall of smokes. But Ethan's in a goose position, though, waiting for the flashbangs from both sides, popping out, but it's bad timing. Azza takes him down. Kusta is he's exposed. He's in the middle of nowhere, but he can't get taken down by Azza. Bomb planted for short, and as Kusta's controlling long, he's got his teammate in tow as well. But it's a potential flank. JKS is in top mid. He's waiting for Cutler to emerge, though. But indeed, he's rotated as Cutler emerges into Short Coast. They're still delivering on that long position. He's got some Rosa in tow and then charging towards Short. JKS gets the first drag towards Long. Oh, no, Cutler! He comes in! He gets both on the Short position. What a catastrophe there for Renegades. A round that they were well and truly set up to win will come toppling down. I think that round comes down to Azza not picking Kuster after he misses the first shot. Kuster is just standing there in no man's land. Azza can't take him down and uh, Kuster wrecks him. Cutler gets two, well he hits two. See Rikke and then he follows him up with the uh, with the last pick there. Lovely stuff, good flashbang, good decision making to run through the flames as well. Just uh, use his teammates as distraction and capitalize on that distraction. Another tactical timeout from Renegades. They need one round from four. And again, I really feel like that round just came down to one Jewel. So they're getting pretty close. And uh, on top of that, JKS with his flank on the double. Uh, could have gotten a double quite easily. But here we have the two high performers. Still has been having a pretty good game and he does tend to be quite a clutch rifler for the team. And we've seen uh, Kusta as well hitting a lot of critical shots with the AWP, opening things up, being able to clutch in much needed situations to keep his team away from the, the abyss. Standing on the edge at the moment. And I guess they're trying to push them off, but they are being stubborn. Double up is quite good for CLG at the moment. Oh, they're going to flash, flash, flash through the smoke onto the long area. Can they get Subrosa, though? Ethan's there for support. He's got no, no, no flashbangs, though, so Subrosa doesn't have that, uh, that blind to capitalize on. Ethan facing the one onto the uh, flashbang, but as a will get taken down, so... I mean, Renegades, they've got, they've got control of long, but look, how, look, what, look what it's cost them. They've, they're two players down at the moment. Man advantage for CLG, despite Ethan being heavily tagged. Koos is on long with the AWP as well. With that smoke, he can jump down and onto the box that's on ramp. It's very hard to see players there, but you can see Rikke knows those angles. He's looking for it immediately. And that's the problem. JKS, he just fell as the kind of lurking player there. Oh, this is very critical. Ricky has to be able to win this battle if there's a chance in the round, and he will. A smoke going for the cross. This is now there's a chance. Now there is a chance. Well, they find Cutler. Cutler's looking to go in there potentially. If he, he doesn't have a flashbang though, he's got a smoke, but no flash. So he can't go for a flash play unless the teammate flashes him in. Ooh, Ricky gets caught there on the angle. Now he's still is spotted by the barrels against three players. He still has been clutched before for Renegades. Can he do it again? No. Cutler in from the side. 
Another one bites the dust. Renegades may be on a half bite in the following round. And now they're going to be uh, sweating like perverts, Dan, because CLG continue to close the gap. This is quite the comeback from CLG. You would have assumed they were all the way out of this one. Seven rounds in a row. Three more required. Oh, no, there's another buy for Renegades, in fact. So they're not going to wait for the AWP. AK is coming up. Perhaps we'll see a faster play limited on the grenades. Do wonder if they're going to go for a fast pace towards long. Don't really have the spawns for it, but uh, with the utility, that might not matter so much. Yam, JKS, Rike heading towards the A site. Used to loan as a going to take up uh, B tunnels to begin with. No fast play in towards long. So we may have the flashbang from Yam to allow Azza to peak. Indeed, we will. Standard stuff so far. Kuster is close, looking for the pick. He spots the presence. They spot him too. And he is baited a little bit for another repeak, but the flash comes in to cover the approach to Catwalk. They know this double ops, though. Will they flash this angle as well? There it is. Boom. The flash. But, oh, Cutler. Very nice. Headshot through the wall. And he, despite the flash being perfect, somehow gets a frag out of that. That is gutting for the Renegade squad. It's a lovely flick from Cutler. And they would have spotted, uh, Kusa would have spotted the bomb towards Xbox, so maybe have, they have a read that uh, at least there are some early intentions towards A from Renegades. These smokes may pull a rotation, but are Renegades committing? We've got a cat drop coming in. He's still taken down immediately, though, by Ethan, just waiting in CT spawn. But what is the ultimate play from Renegades? They've got Yam through the doors now, so he could suggest a B split, but we've still got Rike on short with the bomb. JKS top mid, so all the Renegades players are separated. It's purely about the picks now. Yam can't take Hazed with his wide peak. Now it's a four versus two. Another dire situation for Renegades. See LG holding well. Where's the trade? There is no trade. Hazed escapes. Scathed, but oh, back in. <laughs> Looks like he wanted to die. Rike will aid him on his way. Now, flash, self-flash there for Rike into the bombsite. If he can actually take down the defending player, Kusta, then he might be having a way in, but the nades are making life very troublesome. Another round for CLG. Uh-oh, this is getting close now. This flick was... Sublime. Nice. Two rounds. Two rounds remain. That's uh, Chris J slamming his mouse pad. I'm not sure what he's doing over there. He's <laughs> not even playing yet. He's gone mad already. Two rounds. Renegades finally on the half by, waiting for the full buy in the last round of normal time. Renegades have had eight chances to win one round, and they have failed eight times. Margin for error. I mean, you see how many times they've planted a bomb as well. So they're getting they're getting halfway there. Halfway, but not all the way. Yeah, a couple couple very uh, favorable rounds that uh, they've not been able to close down, which is unfortunate for them on the after-plant scenarios. But uh, also very clutch from CLG in that from that perspective. Ooh, looks like they're going to go all the way out mid there. There is Ethan to meet them. A lot of this really does fall down to Ethan's ability to get a, a frag here. Nate comes in, obviously he's going to pop flash himself through. What is he going to find though as he charges through? They've got to be looking for it, they've got to be looking for it. It's Hayes and Ethan getting multiple kills here as Az is able to trade into the bomb site. But the bomb has been lost, it's sitting in middle. They've got to go back out of the bomb site to go get that bomb in this two versus two. And the CTs are already there. This is going to get pretty wild. They've got time though, they've got time and Azza has a smoke grenade, not sure if he will know a, a clean smoke for CT spawn. Oh, Subrosis moves out of position. If he moves back, oh, it was so close for Ricky. This is a very unlikely situation, all things considered, but this is a great opportunity for Renegades to to win. Well, it's a good one, not a great one. Subrosa, oh man, it's all about timing here, and that smoke is key for the Renegade side. Who's going to peek first? Azza, Rekke can't find the frag. Close. Oh man. Oh man. There's quite a crowd now watching uh, CLG. All the Mouseports players are having a look at what's going on. Oh my days. What is this comeback? What is this comeback? Tactical timeout from Renegades. Last chance saloon in normal time here on Dust2. Nine rounds in a row. Nine rounds in a row. 
they're doing it. They are doing it. At the very least, Renegades, they have a buy now, so there's a chance Rick is back on the op. But where is the confidence? Where Where is the confidence at here now for Renegades? Because it's really tough to lose a round like they just lost there. That two on two, that's that's a spot where you know you you have every chance to win that round. It just comes down to playing well uh, from a team play perspective. Well, you say lose the round. It's tough to win to lose nine rounds when you're at match point. Yes, absolutely. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, so it is. Rick 8 with a peek, but no one's going to have a look early. No pick through the smoke, through the flash. Again, we have uh, Ethan towards the middle area. And again, I don't think there's been too many rounds where either T-side has ventured through those middle doors and suggested anything or made plays necessarily. There have been one or two, but not many. As are Rick and Yam now in the middle area. Double orbs, but neither of them towards mid for the CT side. Kusta on a ramp as usual, and Cutler's going for a push through B with support. But we've got Eustelo in a blind angle. That could be a perfectly timed flashbang. Oh my god, they're going to go for the push though. That is brutal, the timing on that one. Hayes picking up the kill. Another early advantage here for CLG. What do Renegades do? They are set up to go for a play onto the A bomb site, set piece with, this, with smokes. Execution that could be nice for them. There's only one man to worry about. It is Kusta. If they have the nades to just flash them off the angle and smoke their approach, which they've shown in previous rounds, then they can at least get past Kusta. But even still, even when they've got the bomb down in these these uh, scenarios, they haven't been able to actually win the post plants. Look at the time down. There are 35 seconds left on this clock. There's no split. Sobros is pushing long as this push comes in towards a short area. Lovely crossfire from the CTs. Kusa picking Azeroth and again Sobros is flanking now towards a short position. Renegades are trapped. They haven't got a single kill yet and they're running out of time to even get a chance to plant this bomb. Ethan gets picked off but Sobros is coming in from the back now. Headshot onto JKS leaving Yam alone and he can't do it either. We are indeed going to overtime between these two teams. <laughs> oh man. Ten in a row. What a ridiculous situation. What a, an incredible comeback from CLG. A test of fortitude, a test of constitution, mentally and otherwise, for CLG. But they pull it together. And what does that do to Renegades? What does that do to Renegades? They were so far ahead. Renegades have to believe that they are better than this. They had so Which many chances. Which means tilt, that. It means tilt. We're talking pinball tilt, you lifting up the front legs and the machine refuses to respond because you've tilted it. That's the situation that they could be in at the moment. That was a close one from Rike, but no success. And there haven't been much success recently from Renegades. I think that's what, 10? 10, 10 rounds for CLG in a row against match points. 10 rounds. Interestingly, we have to note that uh, CLG have gone for two orps. This is an all-in play when, you're, when you have... Uh, Three rounds a half, ten thousand dollars. You buy two ops in the first round. If you lose, if you, if all your teammates die, to be more specific, then you are in a lot of trouble for the other two rounds. Finally, we've got the middle play coming in from a T side. Yeah, we have a crossfire though, but the smoke should appear on to CT to deny the crossfire. But no, Ethan gets the one on one, and he wins that one on one. When was the last time we saw Renegades winning entries? That is. They are consistently getting wrecked on all the entries. Yeah, Kusa moving in for support. Meanwhile, the rest of the push coming in towards B, but it oh, is... Oh my god. It is uh, a complete failure. They get no kills anywhere. They're losing grip of this match. They've lost the lead now. He's smiling, Dan. That's the first time I've seen a smile from anyone on CLG. Oh my god. They... they, they and I would be smiling too, they just reset the situation. It was match point, they played against 10 match points. They get there and now they can. They have the ability to lose a round. What a luxury. <laughs> what a luxury that is. So, Renegades, they got to pick this up. They have to be able to get entry frags. We just saw a round when everyone tried to get entries and they got crushed and every single, every single player got crushed. There's one from Usulo, takes critical damage in doing so. And on the same, uh, and the same token, a teammate goes down, but look at Yusilo, he's straight in the bomb site there. It's Hayes looking all over the place. Finally, Renegades looking to be able to pick up a round, but can they close it down? That is the question. We still have Kusta in CT spawn. He's making his way with the AWP. There's, there are flashes, there are smokes, there's Molotov's nades for this side. They can put something, like if he throws a nade towards the, uh, well, if Sabreza can get a nade towards the headshot position, Yusilo is done. But look how deep that smoke is. There's not much Sobrosa can do with that. 
Getting a smoke of his own forward. Will he deploy that nade though? That might do the job for you. So he's only got three HP. There he goes. Another kill for Kusta. His retake is on. Oh my god, they've done it, Dan. <laughs> they have retaken his. They are two for zero. Oh man. I thought there was a chance still. Nice little lob there from Mr. Sabrosa. Look, he's happy, Dan. There's more smiles. He's happy. He's a happy man. Twelve rounds in a row. Oh man. I mean the story the, oh, the, man. the story face wise, facially for CLG has been one of pain, anguish, despair, and disorder. But they're happy now. Happy Rainbow Sparkle Squad is the new name for CLG. Two orps continue. We've got renegades down to the Galils on this. The Galils. Well, what do you say about that one? Renegades in a lot of trouble. They'll be charging straight up to the A bomb site. Ethan by Cargus flashed. A couple of players here, Sabrosa and Ethan. Sabrosa starts things off well. That's two for him. And big problems now for the Renegade side because they have yet to gain ground to plant the bomb. They're all falling. It's just one left now. That's Yam. He's over by middle. He's supposed to be the lurker, but now he's the only player left on the team in this round. He's against two players. He's got to try to grab that bomb somehow, but there are two CDs sitting on it. All of a sudden, CLG looking like most fertile bulls in the field, Dan. That is three for zero. They're dropping bombs all over the place. That's 13 for zero, James. That's 13 for zero. All CT rounds. And that's that's the problem. When you have when you have momentum and you go into overtime, the first overtime, you continue on the same side, which means that you're likely to continue the momentum. And that puts Renegades in a horrible position. They're now they're against three match points. And when you've when you failed 13 rounds in a row, and now you're up against three match points. Look at the, look at the joke for your face, is that? What is this? This is weird, this is bizarro world. <laughs> it's quite funny too because uh, Renegades in that last round, you can see that they went with a very fast pace. They didn't really they sort of rushed the execution of that set piece. And we know that they have I'm pretty sure they have some Molotovs, and we know that they have the ability to do the NIP Molotov, you know, all those all those good ones. And, and the NIP Molotov there would have been money. That would have been the money Molotov. There was two players basically standing in that position and fragging them. So maybe, you know, there's a little bit of uh, you're not paying attention to every little detail at this point. Maybe they were missing the Molotov. I'm not sure. But either way, Renegades, they're in trouble. They've lost 13 rounds in a row. They are now against match point, James. They are against match point. And they are at the mercy of the T side. They no longer dictate the pace. Good start from Azza, not getting traded. Flashbang coming in, something Renegades are good at. That support from Yammer, that flashbang's been good for them on the CT side, and it will uh, keep or help keep Azza alive for the time being. Early pickoff, but again, there's nothing but pressure, nothing but beads of sweat on the brow of Renegades. CLG are taking this one pretty slowly, and again, we have to. It, it's a long time ago, 13 rounds ago. Well, more than 13 rounds ago, but. They did play a T side and it did turn out very poorly for them. Only five rounds, I believe, in total. And I'll have to see whether they can get things going for themselves here. Already losing Ethan in the middle there. Unable to trade against Azza. And creeping out once again, looking for the entry, just looking for the straight one versus one against Shoot Azza. Shoot dots. Shoot between the dots. It's a headshot, Dan. It's yeah, a headshot. Yeah, you can, you can see it lined up. Shoot then. between the dots, Matt! No one ever does it. Come on. Oh, and Az is going to run through and kill everyone, isn't he? I can just feel it. Here's all the footsteps. Where's the flashbang? Where is the flashbang for Azza? Still waiting behind the smoke. It's going to be the push coming in, though, regardless. And actually not looking too shabby here, but Yan sitting on the bomb finally gets eliminated. Bomb is now available. Oh, nasty tag on Sabrosa. But a two versus two. CLG could close this. That bomb needs to cross the doors as well, but no one's holding the angle. The CT's closing the distance instead. Default plant coming in. Three flashes on the Renegade side. Hazed with uh, a lovely angle. Going to push through. Not going to work out, though. Sabrosa with a lot to do. We've got Yusolo flying in, but it's Ricky with the AWP. Renegade survived the first test, but there are two more to come. That's the first round, James. In 14 rounds. In almost an entire half. The cameraman trying to catch the Brofist as fast as he could. He just about got there. Two more rounds. Two more match points for CLG. They've been gifted an opportunity. I don't know what god they've been praying to, Dan. But he has thrown them pots and pots of gold. 
So, see if Kusta can get an early shot. He can't. That smoke, uh, the HE grenade will be good enough for Renegades. Two towards B to uh, start off with. Oh, are we going to get a, a push here in upper dark from Renegades? Looks like they were going to go for this. This had worked out quite well for them in the past. It's a trap, though. Oh, the scope. I mean, rather, the barrel of the gun surely was showing for Cutler. There is an opening. And that is an opening that COG will spill through there, taking that B-bomb site. Smoke goes down, as with a quick frag, though. But the rotation is coming into the B-bomb site, but the bomb is still on. Catwalk, he can still go freely to A. Nice frag from Stillo, but the sprint is going to allow COG to plant the bomb. The delayed HE grenade will be a good contribution to the T's running through the smoke. He still has to close the distance, but the grenade will give his position away. Kusa can't do anything about it. And now he's still at a superior angle. One kill for him, traded. And that's a two versus two retake. Nate, Ethan's in a very awkward position, but lovely headshot. That's leaving Yam with 17 HP versus two. How does he do this? He's got a smoke, he's got a kit, but he can't get the kill. CLG still does two away from Renegades. How has this happened then? I don't have any answers for you, but